Welcome back to The Watch, and I want to give my thoughts on the recent drama that is uh, exploding a bit between uh, former employee of uh, Louder with Crowder, Jared Munro, I believe, who was once known as Not Gay Jared. I actually believe stuff like this is important to cover. This is why I covered the recent Matt Walsh stuff, Daily Wire, and then the Stephen Crowder Daily Wire stuff before that, because when it comes to, I guess, the people I would identify as being on my side, or I'm on a side, meaning more traditional, uh, conservative values, even Christian values, okay, anti-woke stuff and everything like that. I absolutely do not want people to represent me who are bad actors. And so if there is bad behavior, I'm not going to uh, support them or uh, even uh, silence any criticism just because they're on my side. I hold my side to a high standard, you could say. Now, I also try to approach it as evenly handed as I can. I don't change my opinions based on uh, past loyalties or anything like that. I understand when friendship comes into the mix of things, you uh, might withhold reaching more categorical judgments and stuff. But like when Stephen Crowder had the issue with The Daily Wire, I kind of held them in equal regard, and I sided with the side that I believed had most merit, and in that case, yeah, it was Stephen Crowder. I think the Daily Wire contract was absolute dog crap, and I appreciated that Stephen was calling that out. And so I have supported Stephen in the past, but not in everything. There's been criticism I had against Crowder in the past as well, and I've voiced them. I can't remember it in Watch Past videos, but I know I did talk about this on Adam and Sitch's podcast as well, some issues I had with Crowder. And one thing in particular that I did mention on Adam and Sitch is actually going to uh, guide or contextualize some conclusions I have here, which pushes me in one direction, I guess, in a conclusion, versus the other. And this is a direct observation that I have seen, okay, that is not painted by bias or other interpretation. I saw this and it has given me an opinion about certain behavior. So that is going to come up as we discuss this. So Stephen Crowder has had a number of controversies, not just the Daily Wire uh, stuff, but since that time, there were some concerning things that ca you know came out about uh, his relationship with his wife, comments he made, videos that were put out, and context missing. Now, these types of things, right? Because then there is also the, uh, I guess, uh, revelations that Dave Landau shared as well from his time at Atlanta with Crowder, which doesn't paint Stephen or Land of Crowder in a good light either. And there was like an odd tweet or two people mentioning like, you know, how do you feel about Stephen versus Daily Wyatt now? And it's like, my opinions haven't changed about that specific thing, okay? Someone can be in the right in the past and do wrong things later on, okay? And you can agree with them at one point and then call them out on another. As to how much calling out is happening in this video, that's what I want to explore. All right, so uh, former employee of Louder with Crowder, formerly known as Not Gay Jared, dropped a video on Twitter talking about uh, legal battles he has had with a former employee. He never names Louder with Crowder. Uh, it's pretty, uh, you know, safe to assume that's who he's talking about. It starts off with Jared bringing up a cease and desist uh, letter that was sent to him enforcing an NDA. And so when... Uh, Jared left Loud with Crowder, he signed an NDA, and the circumstances in which caused him to sign the NDA are very interesting. And we're going to break that down, because there are things that are, thoughts I have in regards to that, and that is a crucial point to this whole thing, because I have a feeling that Crowder is going to be siding with their legal right to enforce an NDA, standard practice, and so on and so forth. Yet the circumstances that Jared raises about why he signed it are interesting. Okay, so now that NDA is being enforced. And with it, a Rule 202 was sent, which is a uh, document or a precedent uh, that basically um, demands all communication with more than a dozen of Jared's friends in any form that are available over an unlimited amount of time. So the purpose of getting access to these communications is to discover if 
a breach of the NDA happened. And so included with this is a type of deposition, an oral deposition where I guess he has to go in, sit down, get filmed and interviewed and ask questions. And these questions will then be held to account in legal proceedings, if they were truthful or not, based on discovery and other legal proceedings. Jared has not handed over the communications and is choosing to fight it legally. Now, the reasons why he would not want to hand over these NDAs, we need to just acknowledge flat out, could very well be because there are online conversations, text logs in Discord or whatever, of him actually breaking the NDA. It could be that. We have to acknowledge that that is a very real possibility. At no point does Jared admit that he has broken anything. But his defense in not handing it over is one that I think is valid and I sympathize with, and the other is an odd kind of defense. The first one is it breaches the privacy of his friends, which I totally get. I absolutely get that. And so I think that is, uh, you know, validity enough to not want to hand it over. But the def I guess the op opposing side would be that these things wouldn't be published unless they need to be used in court to expose the breaching of the NDA. Other than that, nothing would be made public. And so why, what are you afraid of? type of, uh, you know, counter to that. The other counter is an odd one that Jared kind of ends on, which is his right to free speech. And that one I'm a little on the fence for because there are, you know, like if someone enters into a mutual agreement in a contract between two parties, which limits what people can say, that is you entering into it of your own accord, which is why the circumstances of him entering into the NDA is so important to me, all right? Because uh, if uh, there was coercion and, you know, bad behavior to uh, leverage, force someone to sign something that they didn't want to sign, the, yeah, I definitely have an issue there. But if they enter into it freely and willingly, all right, I don't think that actually restricts someone's free speech if they chose to enter that contract willingly, okay? And so the fact that NDAs exist, I don't think is uh, a uh, contradiction of the free speech standard in the constitution. And if Jared is going to pursue that legal argument, I'm not a lawyer in this sense. I don't know enough about the, the, uh, the constitution, free speech, and how it relates to NDAs. I, my suspicion is that that's not going to be a fruitful legal um, line of attack, you could say, to try and do it. I actually think there is a more valid, an actual valid, both morally and legal valid course to try and tackle, you know, the nullification of this NDA, which we will get to. All right. But Jared is not handing over any of this information. He says it violates the privacy of his friends, as I mentioned. All right. So if he handed over this in this information, that will expose his friends to a type of abusive, so abusive and vindictive uh, um, behavior that he is currently facing from his for him, former employee and that would expose his friends to that same type of thing and is trying to defend his friends, he says. Okay, so Crowd actually won the deposition uh, for an oral, so, sorry, won uh, and to now, uh, you know, legally demand Jared give over an oral deposition, hand over any documents of communication Crowder believes may have broken the NDA and has chosen to not cooperate and is now trying to fight it. And as I mentioned, one of the big reasons why he might be refusing to hand over that information could be because he might have legitimately broken the NDA. Now, there is a discussion as to legality and morality here, all right? Um... It feels like, well, well, I'll get to the specific as to why I think it feels like the legal system is being abused in this situation. And uh, in the circumstances, it wouldn't surprise me if Jared actually has talked about conditions he was under working with Stephen Crowder. NDAs are a weird thing, and I, I get the feeling that Jared may have found it difficult to manage when is it safe? Is he allowed to speak about it in private? And is the NDA only covering public and stuff? But when you sign such a document, you need to read everything. Like, this is the whole problem with contracts. You need to know what you're signing. All right. This is why I was so passionate about the Crowder and Daily Wire stuff, because uh, 
there are hidden things in contracts that can abuse and take advantage of people that I just get really frustrated with and people can get accidentally suckered into signing them through ignorance and then get into a whole lot of legal trouble and hassle. Look at what's happening here. Okay, and so in the NDA, there is a strict non-disparagement clause, meaning no negative thing can be said about Stephen Crowder. Jared is very careful to say it's his a, a former employee. Kind of already mentioned, I'm not sure that would uh, technically protect him from <clears throat> the interpretation or belief that this video itself could be considered a breach of the non-disparagement clause because everyone is very clearly assuming that he's talking about Crowder. And I gotta say, I don't know how it's you, know, you could assume anyone else as to, uh, so that actually could be interpreted that way, but it also might be justified under the circumstances because what other choice does he have? Now, those are uh, proven by documents. He's holding up papers, so he doesn't show the documents or anything like that, but that, that seems to be the most concrete stuff. Like, this is the current situation. Then there are several claims uh, that he goes into in his video. Some that, you know, can't really substantiate. Others... I might actually believe, um, and we'll go into it. So, uh, Jared mentions that the uh, conditions of his former employment was toxic and abusive, that there was sexual misconduct, degeneracy, and aggression, and that things were done to Jared and others, the things that were done to Jared and others were disgusting, shocking, and utterly indefensible. And so that is... Uh, um, paraphrasing what he said very accurate and I was very careful to make sure I'm using the same wordage that he says here. This place was and is to this day a workplace rife with sexual misconduct, uh, degeneracy and aggression. The things I saw, the things done to me and the things uh, I witnessed my employer do to others were disgusting, shocking and utterly um, indefensible. He claims to have the receipts for those those um, things he mentioned. The sexual misconduct, the degeneracy, the aggression, things done to him that were disgusting, shocking, and indefensible. Now, if he has the receipts, I am wondering then, why hasn't he taken legal action? Maybe, I, I did he not want to cause waves? Uh, he just wanted to... And it seems like that's the impression I kind of got, that he just wanted to cut ties, put it behind him, focus on the future. And if it was abusive, like I said, he just wanted to get over it and let it be done with. Um, I can understand why someone would choose that. If it truly was abusive, right, I would probably be, you know, asking, well, then you should have taken legal action then. That does take money, lack of funds. So all those things could actually come into play as to why he didn't do anything there. But if it is truly as bad as he says... I think there should be legal, some type of legal action uh, should be done to try and stop that type of stuff or address stuff if it's happened in the past, if it is as bad as he says. This is where we come into uh, who can you believe kind of things. There are, there's more than one pe person that has claimed some very concerning things about the layout of the crowd of work environment. Dave Lando, uh, Lando sorry Dave, I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, uh, Exposed some pretty shocking stuff. Other accusations have come out about Crowder even exposing his genitals to other people in the work environment in like a frat boy type of joking way. And uh, I like I got to be honest, right? In the type of personality that Crowder has, it wouldn't surprise me that 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 he might do something like that because he's a joker, he's a clown, he he is a comedian, and he likes to do edgy humour. I'm not saying it's confirmed or not, but in terms of his personality, I don't see it outside, you know, the realms of possibility for him. Um, now, of course, I don't think anyone should try and ever excuse that type of behaviour in a work environment. That is just unbelievable. Like, you know, if this is true, right, if Crowder has even done something like this, right, oh, holy crap, how, in what reality did he think that he could, that that wouldn't be inappropriate in a work environment, maybe because he was 
possibly treat if it happened, possibly treating the work environment as just uh, its mates hanging out, and he didn't really approach it as a business, a serious business to begin with, and it was just him having fun and and doing the silly, goofy stuff that he probably might have done, you know, um, in high school or something like that. By the way, like so. I used to watch Loudest Crowd quite actively during Not Gay Jared's time when he was on the show. All right, and so I'm quite familiar with that content and Stephen during that time. And then I watched a decent portion when, uh, even after Jared left. All right, and there was always a number of comments that Stephen had made that gave the strong impression that he was uh, possibly a bit of a bully in high school. Um, I look. There was so long ago. I don't have the exact quotes, but there was a number of comments that just kind of revealed to me, and also disparaging comments that he made against nerds and geeks uh, in the past, and you know how they might approach you know nerdy type of pursuits and things. Gave a very clear impression to me that he is a bit of a jock and probably made fun of nerds in high school and stuff, and uh, it also led to a type of behavior that, as I said, I'm just. The, the, this impression, combined with a couple of other first-hand kind of observations that I'll share, is what leads me to believe that these accusations might actually have some merits to it, all right? One of the uh, things that happened that I saw, right, on Louder Crowder when I was watching him, that genuinely put a very big distaste in my mouth about um, Louder Crowder, and uh, it was just the beginning type of thing. I was like, that's, that's not really on. And as to, uh, you know, was it enough to make... It wasn't at the time, because a lot of it was kind of determined by the other party involved, which was Not Gay Jared. So there was a, a thing that happened without a Crowder during um, uh, Not Gay Jared's tenure, where Crowder, and he kind of still does this, where he would try and go incognito, um, sneak into some extreme leftist either events or rallies um, to troll or to get inside information. And one of these was getting or infiltrating an Antifa type of rally protest, but Stephen was a little too well known at the time. And so who did they send in to go undercover? It was Jared. Now, this was actually a bit of a, a more prominent expose because what they ended up uncovering, and they were praised for this, is that the Antifa people at the rally were in possibly intending violence. One of them was armed, had knives in his backpack or something like that, and they're making statements of possible violence. And Crowder, through Jared, got that video footage, and then they got arrested, meaning the Antifa members with the weapons. And they were praised for potentially stopping uh, a violent altercation. Here is the thing, though. When they revealed that uh, happening, they were praising Jared, clapping him and stuff, and they shared some background or, uh, you know, uh, behind the scenes information. And uh, what had happened is Jared infiltrated, was talking to them and it was revealed they had weapons and they might be pursuing violence. And then Jared wanted out. He was not on board with this. He got worried and afraid that this could get violent. He is in the lion's dead and he wanted to get out. And they kind of tried to play this off at the time which is why I also played it off a bit as well, because it seemed like Jared was on board, but there was this moment, a bit of behind the scenes footage that they shared of Jared and Stephen arguing and Jared saying, I did not sign up for this, that he wanted out. He did not want to do it. And Stephen very forcefully saying, no, you're doing it. You're going out there. Essentially, this is what you're signing up for. Very forcefully, verbally forcing someone to do something that was not only dangerous, they were very uncomfortable in doing it. They didn't want to do and I felt that was crossing a big line. It's like, dude, no, you shouldn't have done that. But then it seemed like Jared kind of was more accepting and it was, and they were playing it off that he was happy that he did it after the fact. It seems like when he talks about it was toxic and abusive, um, that there was aggression, okay, that there was stuff that, that was uh, done to him through coercion that's utterly indefensible, all right, that does seem to be confirmed by things I saw that they showed on the show back then that Jared might not have been nearly as okay with as he was playing off putting on a strong face when the show was playing after the fact. When behind the scenes, he says he had huge stress, anxiety to the level of needing to go to hospital. Okay? That was never revealed on the show. They tried to play it off that Jared was happy with it and it was all okay, but it's the combination of facts 
that when this comes out, and then observations I've had, watching the show and what they revealed, confirms some really troubling stuff. And so, I feel it's pretty much confirmed that Stephen, as an employer, would verbally, almost to an aggressive level, force his employees to do things that they were uncomfortable with, even potentially dangerous stuff. And that is friggin' not on. That is not okay. And so when you hear about other types of misconduct, um, berating, aggression, um, threats of firing, that he would threaten people with being fired if they don't do what they're told, and other things like that, quite aggressively, everything, paints what seems to be a pretty abusive work environment. And so when Jared makes these claims, though uh, he says he has receipts, he doesn't give the receipts in this video, there is exterior points of evidence that actually makes me think this is more truthful. Not only the Dave Landau stuff, other things that have emerged from other employees. And look, there are, uh, you know, there's comments that Owen Benjamin has made, and those ones I have always been a bit more hesitant to legitimize, um, because when there is bad blood, exaggerations can be put in, you don't know how truthful it is, and Owen Benjamin has been caught out lying in the past, and so... Uh, I was not willing to put much stock in it, but when you hear all these other comments that seem to be saying similar things, you start to see a pattern of behavior and a bit of a preponderance of evidence that now starting to think there might be a little bit more, that this might not actually be a really positive work environment in any means. And so this is kind of like the culmination. I've had concerns, right? And no, I haven't ignored stuff about the stuff with his wife or the Dave Landau stuff. None of that changed my mind about the Daily Wire contract bullcrap. I still believe he was in the right on that. But all these other stuff in terms of, is this a person that I feel is a good representative for my values? At the moment, it is not looking like it. I am interested to see what Crowder's defense will be, and there will be a defense. And if they're going to go just, we are in our legal rights, okay, to enforce like NDA and everything like that, mm, that's going to be an issue, especially if they're going to avoid some of the more damning points of uh, of account that Jared has shared. Specifically, I think what the, one of the most damning things in all of what uh, Jared is saying are the conditions that caused him to sign the NDA. So we'll get there. So after he went to leave Land of the Crowder, that it's kicked off a process to get him to sign this NDA. And he says, during this time, many lies were told to coerce him into signing. So that if there was direct dishonesty, he should have receipts for that. I can't substantiate that part yet. Okay, okay. So this was an interesting part because it comes into contract interpretation, which I get annoyed with when people disingenuously uh, try and leverage wordage and contracts in a crappy or, uh, you know, um, unfair way. And this is, again, why I saw it, why I criticized Daily Wire, because they were kind of doing it, which is, pisses me off a bit, right? Because Crowder's whole thing was how scummy these contracts were that they, um, uh, Daily Wire put against him, right? And... Based on those standards, you would expect someone to have a bit more um, fair contracts on their own business. And it would have helped out if Stephen actually shared some of his business contracts to show the comparison. So in Jared's original contract, okay, Jared claims it did not have a non-compete in it. Um, but he says Crowder claims, okay, that they interpreted a non-solicitation clause in his original contract to be a non-compete clause that they were applying retroactively. And he says, in the broadest and strictest sense, that they were applying a non-solicitation clause as the broadest and strictest non-compete clause when Jared was trying to leave. If that's the case, that is scummy, all right? Now, what he then claims happened is that based on the um, non-solicitation, right, that they then launched legal action against Jared 
who was seeking a new employment after leaving Louder with Crowder, right? That then Jared would need to fight legally, otherwise there would be further repercussions. This I have an issue with. I can't stand. Ge I truly. This is one of my biggest pet peeves, like genuine hatreds about the legal many legal systems in the U.S. That exist in Australia and uh, sorry, many legal systems in the West that exist in Australia and the U.S. And it's that in many cases. Uh, people with money can pursue legal action and use it to abuse people who do not have money, who cannot spend the money to defend themselves legally. And that is a, a horribly unbalanced system. There is something drastically wrong if people without money can't seek justice and uh, people with money can just abuse it by essentially launching frivolous lawsuits to cause other people to lose money when they have enough money to spare. This is exactly what Jared is claiming Crowder did as a means to leverage him to sign the NDA. So there was this um, legal action taken against him to prevent him from seeking other employment based on a non-compete interpretation of a non-solicitation clause. I generally don't like non-compete clauses, okay? And just to let everyone know, I don't have those in the contracts that I have when I hire other employees as well. They're not, they don't exist. Uh, what I usually use is a right of first refusal because we're making YouTube content here. And so my employees could opt to make similar YouTube videos that might go on Shadowversity, right? And non-compete would prevent them from doing it. And instead I have a right of first refusal. If you have an idea for a video, bring it to me and we'll see if we want to make a video on that subject. And if I don't, you'll go ahead and make that video. And just so you know, like Tyrant, who, by the way, people want, he's still here. Like he's been doing more editing work and he'll appear on Night's Watch now and then. Still here for Shadowverse and everything. He has a whole new channel called Screen Tested, okay? That people might assume it's competing, but I actually see like channels like that add content into the genre that can bring in more people to watch similar content. And so rising tide helps all, all boats. And so that's my view about the whole competition thing. And I've always been pretty consistent about open access to tools and information. And uh, I generally don't like how far copyright goes. And it goes into the same kind of thing about competition and preventing other. And so already I have a bit of a moral annoyance with this non-compete, but to go so far to seems to be like preventing Jared. And he says from seeking employment in media anywhere in the world for two years, which is really excessive. And Jared claims that this was done as a type of revenge for him leaving Louder with Crowder. If so, that is horrible, vindictive, petty, and the height of scumbaggery. But there is a but here, okay? Did it really happen? There'll be legal documents to prove it that uh, Jared says he has, but the NDA might be restricting him because that could come under the non-disparagement thing. So you can see why he might be a bit restricted in sharing all the receipts. And again, he doesn't name Crowder by name in any of this. Does it seem plausible that Crowder would do something like this? Okay, so again, I've watched a lot of his content, which has given me, uh, I would say, um, I don't, I have not, don't know him personally, and clearly there was stuff behind the scenes, the way he's behaving, everything that I have not known, so I can't really claim how well I know him, but there has been things that he has mentioned and commented on that do actually possibly lead to that behavior being possible. So Stephen has shared comments or um, painted, you know, um, a picture through multiple kind of discussions about capitalism, stuff like that, how employees should be grateful for be, being given employment, that there is a type of gratitude or loyalty deserved to the employee. I can't remember exact quotes, so this is all trying to go off memory stuff, and it's the uh, um, surviving, one of the many surviving impressions I have from him over watching hours upon hours of his content. And that type of attitude does actually seem to be present. That, you know, 
it needs to be loyalty that people should be grateful for him offering jobs and and all that stuff that he works a lot and sacrifices and therefore he expects employees to sacrifice and then there are the other things that i you know i can point to more specifically of him being very demanding as an employee even to an unreasonable abusive level right that can you know um go in line with the type of person who could be very bitter about someone leaving employment. And so at the moment, I got to say, I, this is a type of accusation that, does, like, because you know when you hear certain accusations that seem completely out of left field, it's not in the person's character, how could that happen? This one doesn't actually seem that far out of character of him being very bitter. And that, remember the fact he's given the impression of being somewhat of a bully in the past in terms of how he is related to nerds and, and other things, right? That this could be possible. There's no actual evidence except what, you know, the receipts that Jared might be able to reveal as to this. Now, if he does produce evidence that this really happened, this type of legal action to prevent him from seeking further employment, I would need to know what type of employment to see. Is, is there any validity? Is it with a direct competitor that would actually more logically come under a um, non-compete? But the thing is, Jared is claiming there was no non-compete in his original contract, just a non-solicitation clause. And so if Crowder is actually suing, well, if Crowder was or had sued Jared, under the conditions of a non-compete stipulation when there really wasn't one, that is damn scummy. Like, genuinely dog crap behavior, okay? And then it raises the speculation as to why. Why would he do that? Like, wouldn't he want a friend to find another job? If, he, if they left on good terms, you would assume that they wish him well and hope that he has all the success in life and that they would actually help him find a new job then actively not only not give a good you know recommendation or something like that launching legal action against him for seeking another job that is not someone who has parted ways on friendship as they tried to propose and claim in the last video that um not gay jared was on on louder with crowder so not only that, not only that, but that is a big one. That, like I said, these are the conditions that led up to Jared uh, feeling forced to sign the NDA because the condition of signing the NDA was that these other legal actions taken against him would be dropped if he signed the NDA, giving them leverage to force him to sign it. And that is scummy. That is doing something immoral. And they might have, uh, is there, t was there a justif justification that it's so important that he signs the NDA that it justifies making launching slap suits essentially which is frivolous lawsuits against someone to uh, force them to either they have a choice to go bankrupt to fight it to actually get justice if they were if they were in the right if jared was in the right he would have to have lost thousands upon thousands tens of thousands and more even up to hundreds of thousands just to defend his innocence which is uh, reveals one of the most horribly broken systems in my life right like that is awful Right, and he has that choice, or just bend the knee, sign the the NDA, and let it stop, and he doesn't go bankrupt, and he can still support his family. But that's just one thing. He says that there were more. Uh, he says Crowder demanded Jared hand over his Twitter based on it being their intellectual property, and that that he, this was his personal Twitter that he had since I think two thousand and eight, and that Crowder demanded a hand over, and. I think this would be based on the fact that the Twitter handle at the time probably had Not Gay Jared. Not Gay Jared was his title on Louder with Crowder, probably made up by Stephen Crowder, who would then claim the intellectual property of the Not Gay Jared title, which is he ever going to use again? Like already, like I would think a friend, you know, if a friend is leaving, they would let them like, hey, this has become your kind of online identity persona. I hand over the intellectual property for you. I'm never going to... What would Stephen ever use that for? All right? That was his persona for Jared. But no, they wanted him to hand over the Twitter. And it is an assumption that, that I'm making that it's based off of the not gay Jared thing because he... then Jared says that it was based on their intellectual property that they were feeling demand. I, like, I don't think that they could... Uh, they have any legal grounds to demand that. But if they're demanding it and, and you know, threatening to sue if it's not handed over, even if they're in the wrong to demand it, 
Jared would only have the only recourse he had to spend thousands of money to try and challenge that legally, which most likely would win, but is still out of pocket thousands of dollars. So this is another slab suit that they're threatening him with, which is freaking disgusting. You know what a friend would do? Even if it was like the the intellectual property was the big issue, they would just say, change the Twitter, by, like, like the Twitter name. Just don't use not gay Jared. You get to keep the Twitter, but they were demanding he hand over the Twitter. Then there's this other additional one. Jared claims, and look, these are claims. He says he has receipts for these. So uh, my condemnation in a lot of this is based on if these are true. If they are true, this is damn scummy. Some of these things can't be substantiated. Other things, there are observations I have which le lend me to thinking there is some validity to it. That's not to say that I couldn't be disproven wrong if there's evidence that, uh, you know, is shown to be the contrary. But at the moment, this is what I'm finding. And um, uh, Morgan is it, uh, the, the other second hand on the ladder of Crowder. Uh, someone, Morgan, um, tweeted that they're going to respond. And the re response actually might be coming out around the same time this video is dropping. So because um, I'm trying to get this out tonight in Australia, which is the morning, which is when they might be responding to this. And I'll be very interested to see how they respond, because this is the type of stuff that needs to be addressed, not the we're just going to be, um, uh, you know, uh, enforcing our legal rights and uh, enforcing an NDA that was signed willingly by both parties. That is legalese scum speak right there. That's dodging the actual accusations that look to have merit that cast a very negative light on crowd that needs to be addressed. If they just try and avoid it and not address the real problems that are being raised here, it's going to look really bad on Crowder. Like they're just trying to dodge it disingenuously, dishonestly avoid the bad behavior that they did do because the, they might not be able to defend it. That's what it would look like if they don't address what really happened, okay? And so a lot is going to be riding on their response. And I will be pissed if they just do the disingenuous politician tactic of avoiding the question entirely, the, avoiding the actual true issues that are at play here and just say, we're just, you know, enforcing our legal precedent and it's an NDA he signed willingly and he's breaking it and it's him, him bad for breaking the NDA. The, the real issue I see here are the conditions that coerced him into signing the NDA and the dog crap behavior that happened then. Because if there, if this is true, if there was true coercion that happened, that forced Jared to sign the NDA, to me, that looks like that is actual precedent to get it nullified. That that would be the more viable legal pursuit to nullify the NDA based on those conditions, not a free speech defense. So he would need to seek legal counsel. That's my assumption um, that I think how he would need to approach that. A lawyer probably knows a bit more uh, as to if that's a viable legal defense to nullify the NDA. So, Jared claims that Crowder tried to claim his personal production equipment that he was brought, so he owned it, he brought it to the show, used it on the show during production. Now, this one is a bit of a gray area because there might have been a misunderstanding of uh, if it was him loaning the equipment or if it was donated. And that can get grey um, if it was not cleared or made very explicit. But if there's no legal documentation stating transfer of ownership, if Jared has the receipts of purchase, they're legally his. But this is an this is an interesting, important one, right? There was threats of legal per um, uh, legal action taken against him if he did not return these um, bits of production equipment. Again, it's another potential lawsuit that he would have to spend lots of money to try and defend, even if he was in the right, okay? The thing is though, Jared then claims that his, in, his employer spread lies about him stealing company property as a result of this, okay? Now, if this is the case, this is true, right? Like this is, again, it, it all depends on if, but if it is, this is, indefensible, as Jared says. This is some top-tier, scummy behavior right here. 
I was just, woof, right? Now, Jared also claims something interesting with this. He says that by spreading those claims, he says lies about him stealing company production, was Crowder, or the company, Ladder Crowder, Stephen, breaking their side of the non-disparagement clause that Jared says that he had signed. Okay? Dates might be important here then, because it depends when uh, the um, claim was that he stole equipment, if it was before or after. He says he's got receipts for that as well. And if he has receipts of them breaking a non-disparagement clause first, then that could be grounds of him perhaps seeking legal action against them. Money, or would require money. By the way, Jared has launched a uh, GoFundMe. And uh, I'm trying to be balanced here, but obviously you can see that I have some criticisms and I'm trying to, like, if it's true, but already I have admitted that there are certain accusations that I kind of see some validity to that aren't proven, but I've seen other points of evidence that lend credence to it, okay? And so I can't help but say that there is obviously, and I will point out what uh, who I think is right, and I'll call out bad behavior where I see it as being bad, okay? And... If anything, Jared deserves a right to be able to defend himself legally. And if he's getting sued by someone, all right, you would then say, let the court decide who is in the rights if you want to believe that the um, court system can reach, have a, has a higher chance of reaching truthful uh, um, uh, results once people can engage in it if they have enough money. It doesn't even look like Jared has m enough money to engage in it, and so he has that GoFundMe, and... Uh, I think it would be fair. Like I'm considering donating some to it myself because at the very least, I find it despicable that people need money just to defend their innocence or seek justice. And at the very bare minimum, least amount, I think Jared deserves that to ha have his day in court, so to say. Um, and he wants to launch a countersuit to nullify the NDA. And I say, all power to him, especially. One, I don't like NDAs. Or oh, this type of NDA. And in some cases, I could see potential validity to it. There's trade secrets and other things like that. Like that's usually NDAs when you're developing a product or something like that. Um, and so, of course, there is a use for NDAs. Uh, and so I'm not against them wholesale. Uh, but if it's, if this is... like, Because, look, this obviously reeks of Crowder being desperate to cover his own ass. That there was a legitimately horrible stuff in. And uh, this is... <laughs> then is desperate to try and hide it through legal action when, in actual fact, this is now Streisand affecting this. If Stephen Crowder has done some really horrible stuff, then it deserves to be exposed. absolutely, friggin lootly And just saying, oh, oh, he's breaking... Like, I would much prefer and even respect and think it is moral for someone to break a legal NDA to expose true evil, right, for the sake of just standing up for what is right and exposing bad behaviour and actual evil. And then they're willing to cop the legal ramifications to expose that. That is actually honorable and moral, and I respect that, and I give credit to someone doing it, right? If anyone tries to claim that they're that the moral thing is obeying the NDA, all right? No, that's the legal thing. And sometimes the legal system can perfect sorry protect very immoral, evil people. And I would rather see the truth be revealed and and, and look, maybe Crowder has actual defences to these accusations. I'm going to be paying attention to this, and I'll hear him out. This is just my understanding at the moment, based on what Jared is saying, and my previous, you know, observations of Stephen's behaviour. Okay, Stephen Crowder, or the company, might have actually broken the uh, non-disparagement clause first. It does really kind of depend on when it happened, if it was done before or after, anything, but that could be grounds to try and break it both they broke it first or take legal action. But Jared claims the legal actions taken against him were an act of punishment for his leaving. And if so, that is scummy. Jared claims that Crowder threatened to continue to continue the legal action against him, which is type of using the legal system as a type of bullying, all right? which would cause Jared to go into more debt unless he signed the NDA. Jared says it would have cost him thousands and thousands of dollars if he tried to fight it. 
That's a horrible situation to be in. Genuinely horrible. Now bear in mind, right, this was happening when Crowder was probably approaching it to its height. Okay, this is before controversies and any of that. Was it even before the... Actually, it was a bit before demonetization, but they did have Mug Club launched already, because I remember Jared was actually in Mug Club promotions and stuff, and they were probably making a lot of money, right? And so I wonder if there would have even been a lot of sympathy for Jared if he tried to fight it back then, because Crowder had a lot more benefit of the doubt by his fans, by even me, granted, at the time. And he could have spun a lot of negative interpretation that might have not gone well for Jared and Jared might not have never been out because he would have needed to raise funds to fight it back then. The only way he could have fought it back then, right, like to try and not sign the NDA because these legal actions would have been, it seems like, Stephen would have still launched legal actions against him. And then what could he do? He has to either spend thousands of money to fight it or just cop it. And they could, and seem like false ones, like his Twitter handle handing over personal property and uh, his, he, want, he needs to seek another job, right? So those were his choices, either accept these bullcrap bogus things, claimed to be bullcrap bogus, right? Um, legal actions against him, or they would cease if you signed the NDA, which is a very strong position, leveraging position, and a bit of a scummy position that Stephen is leveraging uh, to force an NDA. And then Jared says one of the main reasons he signed it in conjunction with, of course, all these legal uh, things being dropped was that there would be a stipulation in it which would allow him to uh, apply to another job. Okay. So he says specifically that there was a provision in the non-compete that would allow Jared to freely seek employment at another company. And that was the final thing in conjunction with the dropping of the other lawsuits as to why he signed the NDA. Then he goes on to say that even after he entered that employment, Loud with Crowder sent a cease and desist under the under the you know leverage provision of the non-compete, okay, where Jared was then fired from that job. That even the provision that he assumed he was getting in the NDA wasn't actually honored. There might have been le a legal loophole which uh, allowed Crowder to do it, and still scummy in the extreme, by the way. If, if, they're, if, if they were legally out to do it, but they still did it anyway. If this actually happened, it's still scummy. And it could have been the provision that he was allowed to seek employment, but actually being employed at another company was in breach of a non-compete. It's legalese language. Uh, it's type of that verbiage that can be interpreted in contracts. And if it's something like that that they're using to justify them launching a cease and desist in the job that Jared assumed he was entitled to work in based on the provision in the NDA. That is scummy in the extreme. And, uh, and he says he was fired from this. He says illegally, um, his employment was illegally terminated, I believe he, uh, he said. And I'm wondering why. And if this was a cease and desist, there it's a legally recorded document that then so you would assume Jared would be able to present and prove right then that this happened, right? I'm wondering why. I, I, like that's the type. This is the type of thing that Stephen needs to address. Not the oh we're just enforcing our rightful NDA. Why were you trying to stop Jared working in this job? And then in addition, why were you trying to stop him working in media generally? If he's a friend. Who cares if he's working as a producer on another show, even a competitor show, right? I'll employ someone else. They're employing. Is it because what you're afraid they, they might have, like, he would say something to a competitor? What, what, is he working for a competitor? I don't know, right? It seems odd. I would want to know what job it was and if there was actual any justification in them trying to enforce a the non compete. Still doesn't seem like an act of a friend, does it? Okay, so. Uh, it looks a bit vindictive and petty. Jared tried to fight back legally to this firing or the cease and desist, which added thousands of more to his debt, and he had to drop the legal pursuit to fight the case of this firing and of the cease and desist, which he felt was in breach of the NDA because he simply didn't have the money. 
I have no reason to doubt that. That seems like a pretty honest and true situation. And again, that's the things that Crowder needs to address. It's these stuff. These are the more serious accusations that are coming here that if he wants to save his own credibility, okay, and still maintain some good faith from people who would want to support him otherwise, like me, that's the stuff you need to address, Steve, okay? Don't dodge the issue. Don't do the slimy politician avoid the thing. Address the real stuff. Jared says the non-compete has expired, but the NDA has no expiration date. And that's that's baffling. I'm assuming that there's precedent that the stuff NDAs like this perhaps exist otherwise. Usually the, you would assume it was in exchange for a large sum, sum of cash. But Jared says he wasn't paid anything to sign the NDA. It was just to not go bankrupt. Uh, it was to stop the, the legal pressure and legal abuse being leveraged on him. And if he has the receipts to prove it, and there'll be legal documents, that is damning stuff. And I would want to know why. Why was Crowder doing it? I've mentioned it. Why? If he's a friend, wouldn't you want him to have success in life and find further employment? Now, he probably has more, like I said, I think he has more case on the NDA being coerced on him, that uh, there were, you know, immoral, I wonder if he, if he could even claim illegal type of actions, right, uh, thrown on him to force him to sign it against his will. And he says in this video, he never wanted to actually sign this NDA. So he needs to seek some good legal counsel. So Jared has another claim here, which is interesting. He claims the information he has can be used to help other victims to escape their own abusive situations, implying, not saying explicitly, but implying that Crowder may be pressuring and um, sending legal action against other former employees. Uh, do you remember not? Do you remember Sven Computer? He um, left Crowder pretty abruptly at one point. You wonder what happened to him. You don't hear much of Sven Computer. Um, and so Jared is claiming that there are other people in abusive situations and he has information that could expose and therefore expose Crowder and in effect, effectively helping these other victims. So here's a bit, here's an important part. The con, he says, so he says, this is the context his former employee feels that he caught Jared breaking the NDA, meaning Crowder thinks he caught Jared sharing information with other victims of abuse from what is implied to be other former employees of Crowder. Jared doesn't admit that this is the case, but he claims that this is what Stephen is interpreting, okay, and he even puts it in air quotes, that he thinks he caught Jared breaking the NDA by thinking he caught Jared helping other people and who Jared identifies them as victims of abuse and he doesn't it, it's implied other employees of the same employer he's talking about and the 202 which is meant to force Jared to divulge private conversations is meant to discover if he has broken the NDA and bear in mind he might have he might have actually broken the NDA from my perspective, and look, this I'm saying this from a pretty, you know, um, safe position, not facing the legal um, hell that it seems to be Jared is going under. And so I say this with a bit of, you know, um, uh, one-sided ignorance, you could say, is that I think it would be more moral to break the NDA and expose true, vile, bad behavior, especially if there's actual abuse, than it would be to... Uh, obey the NDA. And so if he is exposing actual true evil, I would say, go ahead, break the NDA. But then again, who am I to say that? Because I'm not the one who has to live with the consequences. And there are real world consequences that would come with doing that. Okay. I don't know what it could lead to, like massive amounts of fines. Um, uh, my, like, I'm not, is prison time on the table? I have no idea when it comes to that, right? But of course, there'd be legal repercussions in doing so. But he is trying to fight the uh, and, and do a counter motion to nullify the NDA. And that's, yeah, absolutely. But then again, he needs the money to do it. So Jared says he will not live under the burden of the NDA when he has information that can help other victims. Not that he has already disclosed that information to anyone. 
He may have, but he doesn't say that he did or not in the video itself. I was worried that, hang on, are you admitting that you disclosed information to other victims? No, he doesn't say that. All right. Um, even though there could be an interpretation that, you know, this was an admission, I don't think so. But you don't need, a, you know, <laughs> like truth on your side to sue someone. You can just throw an accusation out and sue them. Kind of the problem that we're facing here. Jared says he is afraid of legal harassment into perpetuity, which I actually, well, if the NDA is into perpetuity, I think that's valid. There has been leaks about Crowder that has hit the um, news, right, about him doing some pretty awful stuff. I haven't really seen him defend some of those things, by the way. This was more silent on it. A bit concerning. But it seems like Crowder thinks these leaks came from Jared. Maybe it came, maybe, like, it's very possible that there are other former employees, so then computer maybe, that has also received um, this 202 thing, um, a uh, demand for discovery in an attempt to, if, if he's under an NDA, by the way, in an attempt to discover who is the leaker, you know. And to me, that is more... That seems to be an admission that the leaks are true and they're trying to put a lid on it, then a defense that they are untrue and that he's purely innocent. So either way, it's not a good look. And it looks like that because it's into perpetuity, that could also mean if any negative thing comes out at f about Loud of the Crowd and stuff like that, that Jared didn't say, it seems like a lot of people assume that he might be the primary person who would say it. There's been a long-standing kind of uh, assumption for ages that Not Gay Jared has all the dirt on Crowder. When Candace Owens was doing her unhinged defense of the Daily Wire in the Stephen Crowder vs. Daily Wire thing, she was brought up Jared a number of times um, in the context that, you know, Jared's under an NDA, but he could say some really dodgy things about Crowder. Why isn't he coming forward and stuff like that, right? And just because that might have been a valid, like, um, thing to say, it wasn't a valid defense of the Daily Wire contract. It was just an attempt to uh, discredit Stephen and not discredit the argument that he had, all right? And it might still... Di and even if Stephen gets fully discredited, I'm still on his side when it comes to that contract. That contract was dog crap. And I would, it's not even good enough to wipe my ass, that Daily Wire contract. If you want to see the details, watch my videos on it. They're here on Night's Watch. Okay, so uh, he says he is not afraid of the truth. When the truth is out, he, like, it seems like he feels that it will vindicate him. And that's a strong position to be in. It's like, just let the truth come out, all right? Um, he wants his former employee to release him from the NDA and give him the same free speech they advocate for. I, again, I'm not sold that this is a free speech issue per se when it comes into legal contracts where people can willingly enter into a uh, agreement which restri restricts their speech. I, I, I think it, it, just because free speech is a standard doesn't mean people can't enter into a willing agreement between two parties to give up some of that free speech under certain conditions. That's just having free exchange of uh, of agreements, basically. Again, the stronger defense, I feel, is the uh, possible coercion that happened that caused him to sign it. But he also says he doesn't think that uh, Crowder would ever... He says his former employee, remember, he doesn't name Crowder, but his former employee would never release him from the NDA, so he intends to issue a counter motion to dissolve it. I say good on him. Yes, I agree. Especially if, uh, well, again, this type of NDA I'm not a fan of anyway. And if there's true bad behavior to be exposed, I'm on his side if that if that is the case. And the only way the truth would come out is by being open about it and letting people say their piece. Who is afraid of the truth? Jared says he isn't. Does Stephen Crowder have anything to hide? You know, that, that like... This is the interesting thing. And it, like, if he is innocent, you would think he would have the receipts to prove his innocence. But there are legal documents. Supposedly, there would be legal documents proving all these spurless lawsuit accusations against Jared for uh, the non-compete seeking out of employment, him getting fired from his first employment, the supposed stealing of company equipment. Jared says he has the receipts of purchase for those. Um, and what was... Uh, 
what was the other one? There was a there was another legal kind of thing that. Um, oh yeah, the Twitter handle. Uh, the handing over the the, uh, the sorry the Twitter account entirely. All right, and those are all threats are either being sued or threats to be sued if Jared did not comply with those demands. All right, there will be legal documents proving that happened, and if that proves it happens, that proves that to me that there were some really scummy, overbearing lawsuits thrown against Jared that were completely uh, invalid to do, right? That there was not precedent. Unless you can prove that they actually bought the equipment, I don't know, it was theirs, the companies. I don't know, that Jared ever say, no, I'm donating it, and then backtrack is like, now I'm leaving, I want it back. Like, is there any way to prove that, right? Is there any way to prove that um, the Twitter account belonged to Stephen Crowder or the Crowder company, whatever, all right? And so this is a pretty messy thing. And I mean... The whole video that Jared put out could be considered a breach of the non-disparagement clause if they try and argue that it's obvious and he intent he, he put it out there knowingly at um you know that people wouldn't assume it was out of the Crowder. But if that's the case, again, if he's trying to expose actual vile bad behavior, I don't care if this is a breach of the non-disparagement clause. I would I, I hate the legal system being used to protect evil, you know, bad behavior. I'd rather it expose, you know, and it's this type of crap that probably protected Harvey Weinstein for a long time. I don't know how bad it is. And uh, I will see. We'll see. Um, we'll see what Stephen says in, in defense of it. It's not looking good, but the ball's in his court to see if he will address the stuff that needs to be addressed. We'll have to wait and see. Stay on watch.